Hi, and welcome back to April Homemade. I'm April. I am a mama of nine children. Today I'm going to share with you a Sunday school method that has worked for me in my home and in my church for many years. This method requires no curriculum and no lesson planning. Um, a lot of curriculums can actually distract children from learning and it puts more work on you as the teacher. So I want to show you a method that you can return to every week and not be worried about what you're going to do or say. Um, with this method, you never run out of material and you are always prepared even though you never lesson plan. So let's get started. The first thing I do to help get everyone excited about our time together is I will choose a song that I think will speak to their hearts and we will work on it for several weeks or months. I will make up certain hand motions to go with it. These are very, very simple. I just do whatever comes to mind and we learn the song at a very slow pace. The song they are working on right now is His Mercy Is More. I will put a link to it in the description below. This is actually the first song I have done with the kids where I found some of the hand motions for the chorus on YouTube and I'll link that video below. I purposely choose theologically rich songs for them over typical kids songs because I know that they're capable of it and this really enriches their vocabulary on strong doctrinal concepts. This song is a beautiful song. Some of the lyrics are, what love could remember no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. I will use the lyrics of the song to spark good conversation by simply asking them what love could remember no wrongs we have done. You'd be surprised how many times children will sing and remember the words of a song without knowing the meaning. And it is a joyful thing to explain the meaning to them. And this can be a big part of your class. Do you ever feel like you can't really do something or accomplish a lot of things because you have a baby or a toddler or both? Um, you know, I have been there. I understand what that's like and I still sometimes feel that way. I do think a lot of times when we try to do something with the toddler or baby around, we can actually accomplish a lot more than we realize. And um, if we keep our, if we keep things simple to where we don't have to lesson plan or have a curriculum, you know, for our homeschool or our worship time, we can accomplish a lot in our children's minds even though the toddler or the baby is around. You'll see the baby kind of in and out during the whole worship time um, and I wanted to show you that so that if you have a little toddler just kind of let them be involved as much as they want to be involved and you'll see that she actually really enjoys the time and tries to do everything that we do. She'll kind of walk off and come back for a little bit. Um, but just, just keep going. Don't even, don't even worry about what your little toddlers are doing. I mean, maybe go and check it out if you hear any toilets flushing or trash being rummaged through. <laughs> But if you've got a couple kids who are really paying attention and doing all the things, just keep going. You'll even see her kind of try to sabotage the whole operation. <laughs> but my other kids are kind of used to that, which is good. 
and they will keep doing what they're supposed to be doing usually, even though she is somewhat of a distraction. If you watch this video closely, you'll see just how much the baby participates. She'll even say a lot of the things that we say, but it's kind of hard to catch. And I actually did not realize how much she was picking up until I watched this video. So don't underestimate the, the impact that these worship sessions can have on even just a one-year-old. So don't give up, Mama. Ask God to shine His light on your time with your kids and know that He will make a way for you to train up your children in the way they should go. So part of our worship time includes a story time, and I like to use these read aloud Bible story books, um, especially for younger children. They're very captivating and engaging for young children. They familiarize them with the stories of the Bible in a very simple way. Obviously, you could just use the Bible if you are more comfortable with that. I will also link some other children's Bibles down below that some of my older children enjoy during this time and also during their homeschool time. Until he's better. 
So he paid the other man to take care of him. Then he got on his donkey and went clip-clop, clip-clop, clip-clop down the road. So what did you learn? So the next thing that we do is we will have a memorization time where we learn basically a series of questions and answers. These are really important questions for our children's lives and you can see that they get excited about memorizing them and they are happy to know them. And these questions often come up in our daily lives. We'll be talking about something, like maybe they'll ask me, you know, is God in my room? And I will say, well, where is God? Because that's one of our questions. And they'll smile and say, God is everywhere. And they realize that they already know the answer to what they're asking. And so we spend some time learning these questions and answers. We try to learn more and more new ones each time we practice. Who were our first parents? Adam and Eve. Me. Good. How did God create man? God created man. Can God 
do all things? Yes. yes. God can do all His holy will. Where do you learn how to love and obey God? In, In the, the Bible, Bible alone. Good. Mom? Okay, so. No. Who made you? God. God. What else did God make? God made all things. All things. Why did God make you in all things? For his own glory. How can you glorify God? By loving him and doing what he demands. Good. Why are you to glorify God? Because he made me and takes care of me. Is there more than one true God? No. We also have a psalm reading time. This is mainly a listening time for the children, but some of the psalms are somewhat repetitive, and so they will say some of it with me, and it's repetitive. Um, but this is mainly this is mainly a time for the children to listen to the word and to let the word do the work for them to familiarize themselves with the psalms because the psalms are the gospel written over and over give thanks oh, to the god of oh, gods oh, his love endures forever give thanks to the lord of to him who alone does great wonders his love endures forever who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. You'll notice that I have not been using a lot of my own words in our worship time together. You know, I don't have a script. Um, I'm simply leaning on the scriptures and the wise men who have come before us in order to feed these children the words that they need to hear. Anything that I would say that is of value comes from the Lord. And I am so thankful that I can read His words to my children and those words would be the absolute loveliest words they could ever hear. Good. How long does God's love endure? Forever. <laughs> Forever, oh. right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So God loves. God loves you, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And how long does his love endure? Forever. So is he ever going to stop loving you? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. But what if you sin? He, he, he still will forgive you. you. We still, do we still do bad things? Yes. yes. Yeah, we do. But do we want to do bad things? No. no we don't. We but at least like, sometimes we do. That's true. We struggle with that, don't we? Yes, ma'am. We want to do bad things because we are foolish. But, but when we are, but as Christians, we try to not do bad things. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Singing from the hymnal is becoming more and more uncommon in our modern churches these days and it is a great loss the hymns that we find in our hymnals have truly withstood the test of time they are filled with strong doctrinal truths that you often will not find in modern christian music they have such a richness to them such beauty and I want to give that to my children, and I pray that they will pass that on to their children. Good. 
teaching them to sing is so important and it's especially important for them to know the joy of singing to the Lord. I find it very beneficial to teach them songs from the hymnal. One, because God commands us to sing, therefore I know it's beneficial, but also in order to maximize their participation when we worship on Sunday mornings with our church. Sometimes I will focus on teaching them the chorus of the hymn, especially if they don't read, so that they can at least sing with our church each time that the chorus comes back around. This makes the kids so happy that they know the song during worship, and the adults around them are just absolutely thrilled when they hear sweet children singing the hymns along with us. You know, someone once said that hymns are the sermons that you remember, and it is just absolutely true. The last thing we do is have a prayer time, and it is amazing to me how much the children enjoy this time, and it is so sweet to hear the prayers of the little children. This class is very easily expandable or it can easily be shortened. If we have extra time, I like to repeat the special song or do more of the questions and answers or read some more psalms. Do not be afraid of repetition. It is a very useful tool to help them really sink everything into their minds even more. This is the beauty of this method. You are never out of material and you are always prepared even though you never lesson plan. Once you've read all the Psalms, you can start at the beginning. Once you've read all of your Bible stories, you can start back at the beginning. Same with your question and answer book. You can start back over and they will learn so much. I have seen this. I've seen the fruit of this method in my own children and I have seen it in the Sunday school kids that I teach. Right now I'm teaching ages one to four years old and they have their favorite stories they like to hear again and again. Um, they do not mind at all if things are repeated and they love, they love it when they know the answers. And this will produce a lot of fruit in them and they, they will be changed. They will be changed because you have leaned on the scriptures. And what a blessing it is that we would not have to think of things to say because we have leaned on the word of God. Help us to live our lives being grateful oh. for all the blessings. In oh. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, high five. High five, Lauren. Everybody give Lauren a high five. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you real soon.